Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, Fix It Dad here. Um, the issue that has come up today in my world is uh, my 2010 Nissan Altima uh, brakes started making some noise, so it is time to get them changed. Uh, I thought I would do a quick uh, tutorial on how to replace the front brake pads on my 2010 Nissan Altima. So let's take a look and see what this is going to take to do. Okay, so I'm going to do things the uh, fix-it-dad way, which uh, is the easy way. Um, so I don't have a lot of specialty tools or things like that. So um, I like to bring things to you as simply as possible. So all I'm going to need um, is a 14 millimeter socket, a flathead screwdriver, and a 21 millimeter. Uh, I have it on a breaker bar. Um, you can use a star wrench or whatever. This is going to be used just to um, take off the... Um, the wheel to break the lug nuts loose so um, yeah you will need a jack stand uh, for safety and a jack obviously um, those are the only two real tools that you need um, so uh, to support the vehicle uh, properly so let's go ahead and walk through what we need to do and how we need to do it okay so first off all we need to do is break the lug nuts loose uh, we are going to do that while the vehicle is on the floor uh, so it's not supported by jacks or jack stand or anything like that um, we do need to just come in and break these loose. We're not going to remove them. We're just going to loosen them. Uh, the reason we do it while it's on the ground, the wheel, the vehicle, the weight of the vehicle is holding it down. It's easy for us to break them loose. You have it up in the air. The wheel could want to spin, uh, whatever. It's going to wobble back and forth, so you're not going to be able to, to take it off very well. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start by breaking these loose. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, all we need to do is break these loose. I've got my breaker bar. Give it a little tug, and they're going to come loose. And boom. Okay, now that we have the lug nuts uh, broke loose, we are going to jack the vehicle up and we're going to support it on a jack stand. So uh, on the left side of the vehicle, which is the driver's side here, uh, underneath the rocker panel, um, we're going to see what's called a pinch weld. That's this area here that runs along. You can see it's a pinch weld because it's they're pinched together and welded. Uh, so when we set our jack stand, our jack stand is going to go right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the vehicle uh, in the air and show you how to place the jack stand. So underneath the front of the vehicle, um, right behind the wheel that I'm going to take off, uh, I've placed the jack under the subframe here. I'm trying to keep everything to where you have uh, visibility to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and jack the vehicle up from here and place the jack stand. Okay, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and take the jack stand. I got the vehicle uh, up in the air. Uh, I'm gonna take the jack stand here. And I'm gonna have to go up a tiny bit more to get it underneath there. I'm gonna give it a couple cranks. And if you can come down here and see, right here's the pinch weld. I'm just lining up the pinch weld with the center of the jack stand. And I'm gonna go ahead and lower the jack very slowly onto the jack stand there. Now that we're good and supported, I'm going to go ahead and leave the jack underneath the subframe just for some additional support. Um, but our wheel is off the ground and our vehicle is supported. Okay, so everything's broke loose. So now the lug nuts should come off really easy. So I don't mean to go into too much depth on how to remove the wheel, but uh, I just want to make sure that uh, everybody understands each step and what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish taking these off uh, and then we'll take a look at what's underneath. Okay, now that everything's off, we can remove the wheel, set it off to the side, and keep the lug nuts in a safe place so you don't lose them. I'm gonna just set them right here in the crack of my garage floor. Okay, now all we need is a 14 millimeter ratchet and our handy dandy flat head screwdriver. Okay, so with these tools, um, we're just going to need to break loose the two bolts that hold the caliper on, uh, one here, and one here so just one at the top and one at the bottom um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just break them loose real quick here that's one and I'm not gonna remove them just breaking them loose um, just to make it easier for me now since I'm doing things my way the easy way if you look on the side of the caliper here we have a hole this hole um, is gonna give me access to compress the ca the piston that's inside of here so um, what I like to do is put my uh, uh, flathead in this hole and I just give it a little bit of pressure. 
you can see that it's starting to compress the caliper. If you look right over here, as I'm putting pressure on this, the caliper is coming away from the brake pad. So all I'm doing is compressing. I'm not pulling or pushing really hard at all, um, but I am gonna do just a slow pull. And sometimes you wanna reposition your screwdriver just to get a better bite in there. And again, we are just compressing because I don't have any other way to compress this. Uh, I don't have a, a C-clamp or anything that's going to allow me to uh, compress this. So we're just going to give it a pull until it is completely done. Okay, now that the piston has been completely compressed, I'm going to go ahead. I already broke these bolts loose, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove them. So I'll just take the top one out here which is why I broke them loose beforehand. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take the bottom one out. Once these two bolts are out, the caliper will come right off. All right, I have both of those removed. Now you'll see the caliper is gonna just slide right off. Uh, you can see that the piston is already compressed. If it wasn't, you would see it sticking out here, but I've already compressed it all the way in. I'm gonna go ahead and just let that hang. I'm gonna remove the brake pads uh, themselves here. So you just slide them right out front and back here and that is it so uh, the next thing I like to do is go ahead and take a look at the brake pads themselves when I grab the new ones I would like to compare and make sure uh, that they're the correct pad so uh, I just try to line them up these two look very similar this one looks good so it looks like we have the correct pads Okay, so I've confirmed that I have the correct brake pads. Um, this was just a cheaper set that I bought from O'Reilly's, uh, and this doesn't come with the hardware uh, or the grease for the pad, so, um, which I thought it would, uh, they normally do. But this hardware, so when you get a hardware kit with it, it's just these little metal retainers. You just pop them out and pop these ones in. These are actually fine, so um, I'm not even gonna worry about replacing that at all. Um, it usually comes with some brake grease that you just apply to the edge of the pad here. Um, so uh, it just kind of helps it from uh, squeaking or whatever. So um, they didn't come with any of that. I'm going to go ahead and apply some uh, a little bit of grease that I have here. So um, just to, to help quiet them down. So um, if you don't do it, it's not the end of the world if it didn't come with any. Um, but typically they will try to sell you some or usually it comes with the, with the kit. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that and we'll insert the brakes. Now you don't need a lot, I just put a little bit of the grease on here and that is pretty much all we're doing. Just so that way where the caliper arms and everything rest, um, you don't get any weird uh, vibration or anything like that. So um, the way these sit in there, you're just going to curve the outside edge with the edge of the rotor. So that's how you know which one goes where if you weren't paying attention when you took it off. Um, but it just seats right inside this groove at the bottom and the groove in the top and you give it a little push, it should go right in. So that's all we need to do there. Uh, and then we're gonna do the same thing with the back pad. So in this case, both of these little wear bar indicators, which is that little metal bar at the top, uh, goes into the top and the bottom. And this is so as your brakes wear out, you'll start to hear a little squeak, uh, which is what I was hearing uh, in my case, um, indicating that, hey, time to put these on. Uh, doing it when you hear this noise is always recommended just because if you wait too long, you'll get metal to metal. You'll start messing up your rotor. You'll have to get them resurfaced uh, or replaced. So um, I don't need to do that. Typically when you do brakes, you want to resurface the rotors, but uh, these are fine. I'm going to go ahead and roll with it and just put the pads on. All right. So now that the brake pads are installed, I'm just going to take my caliper. You can see it's already compressed, so it slides right on. I'm going to go ahead and uh, replace the two bolts into the back of the caliper. Sometimes you gotta give them just a little wiggle. Got that one in. I'm gonna go as far as I can by hand before I have to break off the uh, ratchet. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the bottom one. Do the same thing. Get that all the way in. Awesome. Awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my 14 millimeter and I'm gonna go ahead and torque these down. So we just wanna make them to where they're nice and tight. You don't have to over tighten them, but you wanna make sure that they are tight. Okay, we have both of these now nice and tight. 
All we have left to do, put the wheel on and torque down the lug nuts. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and take the wheel and our lug nuts and we are going to reinstall the wheel. All right, you got it? All right, with these, uh, I always like to put them on by hand so we don't uh, cross thread them because if you cross thread these, you're gonna be in a world of hurt having to change the studs out and it's very easy to do. So run them on by hand a few threads each uh, before you go ahead and tighten them down. Okay, so what we're doing is we're just uh, tightening down the lug nuts before we lower the vehicle down. So um, I'm just going to kind of spin them on by hand here. Um, it's always a good idea to go in a star pattern. So just like so, uh, that assures that the rim is seating onto the hub uh, evenly. So um, I go ahead and do that and I just give them a couple uh, snug, snug, uh, just a little bit to snug them down. So once they are snug and the wheel is good, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the jack stand. Uh, so just lift up the jack a little bit here, just to get the tension off of the jack stand itself. All righty. And I'm gonna pull that out, and I'm gonna go ahead and lower the vehicle down. So once this is down, all we have left to do is torque the wheel. So um, each vehicle manufacturer, has their own torque specifications. Um, I believe mine here is 80 foot pounds, um, but you'll have to look up for your exact model. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and crank it back down uh, with my breaker bar here. And I'm just not gonna over tighten it. Again, I do things my way here. And we're gonna go ahead and crank these down to about 80, 80 to 90 foot pounds on this one. That is perfect. All right, so now that I have those torqued down, uh, the, the main thing is so we compressed that caliper uh, when we, before we took it off. So I'm always gonna give these uh, brakes a pump and let that piston come back out before I go taking off in the vehicle. So um, that's one of the things I like to do is just make sure to pump the brakes, get the caliper pistons, uh, and the pads all seated back in there nice and tight before I start the car. Okay, so yeah, uh, I start the car up. I give the brakes a couple pumps before I take off. Uh, obviously, you want to do a test drive uh, and make sure that everything is working and uh, uh, properly and functioning correctly. So um, that's pretty much it for changing the brakes and then just repeat the same things on the opposite side. So um, that's going to get you through changing out the front pads. Uh, it's going to get you through it the, the quick and easy way. So um, I hope this video was helpful. Um, I'll continue to keep on putting videos in there. Just give me likes and subscribes and I can make sure to, to keep doing these for you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.